Hi, I'm Christine. And I'm Jonathan. And we are excited to share with you the new Connect to Builder feature. We've got five key takeaways for you to learn today. Follow along as we share with you, what is it? What's the use case? Show it to me. What are the setup considerations? Where do I go for more information? Number one, what is it? It's a tool to build your own custom connector to include operations specific to your use case. It's a tool designed and tested by our builders that allows anyone who understands API documentation to create a connector that looks and feels exactly like a tray connector. Connector Builder gives you the full manageability and supportability of a tray built connector. It will look and operate exactly like a pre-built connector with endpoints. It's a remarkable low-code option to our existing HTTP connection. Number two, what's the use case? With an ever-growing number of APIs out there, it's likely you'll need to create a custom connector that's specific to your organization. While the HTTP client gives you a quick and easy way to configure a single step to perform an API call, Connector Builder gives you the full power and versatility of a connector. It allows you to create custom connectors in a low-code option, lets you manage your custom connectors from a centralized place, and allows you to share connectors throughout your organization. Number three, show it to me. Let's join Christine as she walks us through a demo. You'll see a brand new tab added to your dashboard called Connectors, which houses all the connectors that you've built. You can see here that I have built four. One is in review and ready to get published. Let's have a look at the first connector. So this is the Airtable API and I have one operation in this connector. You can add more operations if needed by clicking on the new operation button. Drilling down, you'll see three tabs for this operation. The first one has the name and description. It's good housekeeping to give a description as you want to tell the builder what the operation does. In this tab, it will structure the HTTP request, the endpoints, headers, query parameters and request body. It looks very similar to how you would structure the HTTP client connector back on the canvas. And in this tab, this shows you the operational inputs. So the, the way that the full URL is constructed, it's composed of a base URL, which you will enter when we're setting up the connector, and the endpoint. You'll see that when I add an operation endpoint, it'll appear in the preview panel on the right hand side, together with the input box, and these values will be entered by the end user in the connector. So let's demo it and build an Airtable connector with one operation. In order to create the connector, I have the following to hand. The API documentation for the service, API credentials, and trade.io account with our connector creator. To start building, make sure that you've set up a custom service for the API. I have created one for Airtable, which has token-based authentication. But let's go through this together. Click New Service and add a unique service name. I'll do the same here. The type is token-based authentication. We simply add a property called API key because that's what I'm going to keep store under this parameter and add it as a default value here. Then click Add Service. Now that we've set up the custom service, let's set up our new connector. So we'll give it a name. Add a description then we'll choose a service to authenticate with so this is what we set up earlier so we'll find the one that we set up copy and paste in the base URL which we will find in the API docs and then create connector we'll 
add a new operation. And we just simply want to get all records. I've given this operation name a uh, title of get records and this operation is get request so I'll write a short description of what this operation does. We'll structure the HTTP request shortly but let's create the operation inputs. According to the docs, we need the user to input the table ID and the base ID of the table. These are our unique identifiers to get all the records. I'm creating the first input, the name and the key, for table ID. But if there's a space in the key or a special character, an error message will come up and tell you to remove it. If there's something that you want the user to know about this particular key, Write in the description and it will appear as a tooltip next to the key. We'll mark the input as required and we'll do exactly the same for the base ID. We'll go back to the HTTP request and authenticate in the preview panel. Let's structure the endpoint where we'll use the curly braces to pull in the operation inputs. Provide your bearer token with the authorization bearer token HTTP header to get my API key. I'll use the curly braces to pull it in from the author I set up. That all looks good. So let's test this operation by retrieving records from a table that I created earlier in the test portion of the panel. When you've added all the operations, simply publish your connector. It'll take up to 10 minutes to appear in your connector list. Number four, setup or usage considerations. For setup, before you begin, you'll need to make sure you have your API documentation and credentials available. For usage, keep in mind that while Connector Builder will support most of your needs, there are cases where certain connector features, such as file uploading, SOAP connectors, or connectors with non-standard authentication methods may require assistance from Tray's engineering team. And number five, where can I get more information? For detailed setup and configuration steps, please refer to the documentation link provided below. And that's our take five. Thanks for watching.